The harmony between Soul Reaper and Zanpak To is a synergy created by meditation, communication, and combat. Much like a very well-oiled relationship between lovers, however, the secrets of this soul-cutting blade have been shrouded in such mystery that its true potential is almost completely unknown. On this episode of Serete Talk, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything Bleach-related, we will be addressing these mysteries and going in-depth into the potential of what the Soul Reaper's Edge can truly do. So, that was the intro. That was one of four different intros I wrote for this. And getting into this, I'd like to say it's been a while since doing one of these. Uh, as always, though, I, I do enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoy it as well. The whole point of Serenite Talk is to help inform people of things that they might have missed or just blatantly didn't know. Um, as well as to give those who haven't watched the series some type of insight to what Bleach has had offered to us all. Um, I want this to be something to where people could be like, no, I haven't seen the show, but... I have uh, watched this podcast called Serite Talk, and I feel as though I know enough now. Not not enough to hold my own in an argument, but enough to uh, strike up a conversation about it. And this is going to be a very hellish episode, because this is about two and a half months in the making. Um, I, I say two and a half months, it's probably been like a month and a half. It's just been a really long time to do the research because of, like I said, the mystery shrouded in what the Zanpakuto truly is. It's very confusing to write some of these later parts. Like, there's four stages to a Zanpakuto. Actually, there's five. Five complete stages to a Zanpakuto, and each one of them has a decent amount of information on them, but... The thing is, the last two have little to no information. So, that was the hardest part, trying to do research. I read through chapter after chapter. I even went on the wiki and had conversations with the people who run the wiki, which I'm just saying they're not very helpful, and that'll be a whole nother video in and of itself. Um, and this is... It's just something extremely hard to write. Uh, the people on the Amino voted for this, and I'm giving it to y'all. But just know that it does take a while to write majority of these episodes. And I appreciate the patience that everybody has given. And with that being said, let's go. Before we get into the actual stages of the Zanpakuto, we must talk about the creator, Oetsu Nimaya. From the conception of the Serite, Oetsu was chosen by Ginryusa Yamamoto to create a weapon fit to be used by this band of killers. Over the next 1,200 years, even to today, Oetsu is the sole provider of the Zanpakuto. Yes, pun intended. From there, Oetsu was chosen by the Soul King to be a part of his royal guard, a group of the most elite Soul Reapers with the singular purpose of protecting the Soul King at all cost. This means he, amongst the other four, are even given the bones of the Soul King himself, making them immortal. History lessons aside, we will begin with the distribution of the Zanpakuto. Now, this is where we get into what the Zanpakuto truly is, and it is a complex network of things. Oetsu has stated in the past that, or in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, um, that the Zanpakuto spirit is not just a separate spirit, or your friend, or a lover, or just somebody you meet. The Zanpakuto spirit is you. It is something that has gone through the same process as you after it has become a part of you. It lets you know its name. You become relationship bound with your Zanpakuto through a connection that can only be severed if you die or if you go mentally insane. 
Though the Zanpakuto is an almighty powerful weapon, deemed by Central 46 to be one of possible mass destruction, it is given to students. Young soul reapers who will one day join the 13 court guard companies and become soul reapers. Now when I say students, I don't mean people of 13 through 17 year old age limits, I guess. Uh, I mean more close to 113 to 117 years old. This is evident of Rukia stating she is 10 times Ichigo's age at the beginning of the series. More so when people create characters, they want to make them young. I've seen characters go from 4 to 16 to even 50. And at these ages, if they're a natural born soul, they're, they're more infant related like at four years old you're still possibly even considered an infant when you get to the shino academy around this age you're going to be somewhere in the early hundreds and i mean early hundreds as in like 100 to 105 ish this does not inherently mean she just received her Zanpakuto, but it does mean that souls age different to humans. That's what I'm trying to get across. So when creating a character, please do um, make them of at least the late hundreds. I say late hundreds. 200 to 800 seems to be the proper, if you're going for canonicity's sake. I'll make another video on that type of age limiting stuff i'll make an entire video on s how to create a character but i, I do want to try and tie this episode into that kind of stuff uh though that's another video for another day <laughs> i am reading off of a script by the way as i usually do According to the anime, specifically the Soul Society arc, Soul Reapers are given a Zanpak Toe when they enter the Shino Academy. However, later on in the series, in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we find out that these are not Zanpak Toe, but instead the pre-evolution to the Zanpak Toe known as the Asauchi. These Asauchi are given to low-ranking students and do not have any names. From there... The more time the students spend with their Asauji, the more reishi it will steal until its name is revealed to the user and becomes a Zanpakuto. The Asauji are created by Oetsu Nimaya by being the singular most powerful weapons in existence. Not because of the destructive capabilities, but rather by the potential to become anything. He is of course referring to Zanpakuto such as Zanka no Tachi and Kyoka Sugetsu, among others. Now obviously there are Zanpakuto that are less impressive such as Huzuki Maru and Hisagamaru, but you guys asked for the evolution of the Zanpakuto, not how they work and which ones are good and which ones aren't. A uh, little context behind that. All Zanpakuto are very useful. Uh, Hasagamaru is Hanataro Yamada's Zanpakuto. It's a little uh, surgical scalpel and it collects Riatsu or pain. My bad. It collects pain and heals the opponent at the same time until its little meter that's on the side of it fills all the way up and then it releases a Getsuga like slash. And it's just, it's as the kids these days say, sugoi sugoi. You know, it, it's just freaking amazing. Uh, once the Asauchi has converted itself into a Zanpakuto, not much changes. While, yes, it now has a name, in appearance, it still is just a blade. Most Zanpakuto in their sealed state take their form of a Japanese katana. Um... Now, obviously, there are exceptions to this rule, those being Gin, Toshiro, Kensei, and Kisuke. However, this requires a massive amount of spiritual control over your Zanpakuto, and three out of those four are considered prodigies, 
and Kisuke is one of the five noble clans. More on him in another video as well, if you guys want that. From there, the Zanpakuto reveals its name to its Soul Reaper. This is the most common and most used form known as the Shikai. It is unknown how long this process takes to achieve the Shikai, however, once it is reached, the Soul Reaper is now able to use the power within their blade. This power could literally be anything, ranging from ice powers to fire to toxic to even just a stick. Zukimaru. However, do keep in mind that they can only have one element. This means once the Shikai is met, you're stuck with that element for good. These elements are melee, keto, projectile, illusion, poison, fire, ice, earth, wind, water, lightning, and unclassified. Now, it is worth noting that this specific part will go into heavy detail unto the elements. When a Zampakto has one of these elements, there is no sub-element to it. Some Zampakto are classified as weather-based, but that does not mean they can utilize rain, snow, hurricane, and lightning all at once. Take Chojiro Sasakibe Zampakto Koko Gonryorikyu, for example. Credited as having one of the strongest weather-based Zampakto, it can only use lightning. Even Toshiro having the strongest water and ice-based Zampakto can only utilize the ice form of this. It is worth noting that Hyorin Maru can create storm clouds that only snow and hail, both forms of ice. Even if Daigorin Hyorin Maru is said to be water and ice, the only water aspect is taking the moisture in the air and freezing it. To recap this section, once a Zanpakuto reveals its name, the element that it has chosen is stuck with that element until it and the Soul Reaper dies. This concludes the Shikai portion. The next portion will talk about the next step in evolution, the Bankai. Now, a common misconception about the Bankai would be that it can be achieved relatively easy, at least by roleplay standards, going back into connecting this into the OC part. A lot of people like to say that their character is 16 years old and has achieved Bankai, and that's an extreme assumption to just be like, oh yeah, my character's got this. It's like, no, they really don't. You can't have that by now, uh, unless your name's Ichigo. And unfortunately, your name probably isn't Ichigo. Kurosaki, at least. Uh, to be more specific, the Shiba clan. This is obviously not true, as stated by Byakuya. A Bankai takes 10 years to learn and 10 more to master. He stated this in his fight with Rinji Abarai, even going so far as to call Hihio Zabimaru immature, which is technically accurate given the fact that he had just recently obtained and learned the technique, then immediately rushed into battle with it. The main way to achieve Bankai is through meditation, the method of communication that Soul Reapers use to communicate with their Zanpaktos is known as Jinzen. Jinzen, sounding like a Star Wars term, is performed by placing one Zanpakuto into their lap, taking a meditative position, and forcing their mind into the world of their Zanpakuto. Once in this meditative state, the user can enter their inner world and call out their Zanpakuto. It is worth noting that the state of the spirit of the Zanpakuto is in its truest form, and that it is unknown how Ichigo got into Muramasa's inner world. Even if you go back and watch that arc, it personally, it's one of my favorite arcs, but it's so confusing how Ichigo was able to enter the inner world of Muramasa and then fight him and then do all this weird stuff. 
I, I don't understand it. That's probably why it was a filler. To first be able to use a Zanpakuto, being the Shikai state or other, one must have a perfect mental stability with their Zanpakuto. If any form of mental anguish befalls the Soul Reaper, it is noted that they will be unable to utilize the abilities of their blade. This is worth noting now due to the fact that you must be in a state of calm-mindedness to be able to communicate with your blade. After the Soul Reaper enters the inner world of their blade, they will be met with a form of trial by combat in order to obtain the next stage in evolution. Naturally, the Zanpakuto will be unwilling to teach this or any type of abilities to their master, and this form of training is so intense that any form of damage that the Soul Reaper takes is reflected in and onto the physical body. Due to this form of training, the Soul Reaper and Zanpakuto become so close that they are now able to hear each other, though this form of communication can, at times, be patchy, resulting in one party, the Soul Reaper, not being able to communicate outside of the inner world. Due to the naturally violent nature of the Zanpakuto, it tends to be an extremely moody creature. These mood swings are dependent on how the Soul Reaper treats it, and can even determine its personality overall. This partially puts the responsibility on the Soul Reaper to determine if the true power will be achieved or not. Though there aren't many, the main example of this is Yumichika Aesagawa and his Zanpakuto Fuji Kujaku, or should I refer to it as Rudi Iru Kujaku. Due to calling it Wisteria Peacock, after its least favorite color, Wisteria, Ruriiru Kujaku withholds a portion of its power and abilities to be an extremely less enhanced version of its Shikai form. Unfortunately, Yumichika does this to hide that power, so he is not kicked out of Squad 11 for having a keto based Zanpakuto. By calling his Zanpakuto an incorrect name, it forces Rui Iru to become moody and withdraw power. Now, it is worth noting that this is the only major case of something like this happening. This does not mean every case is the same, or to the extent of this case would happen for all. In fact, in theory, doing this may even cause you to never learn Bankai, or even push you to the point of losing connection with your blade altogether. However, this is simply speculation. Going back into the inner world, in most cases, only the Zanpakuto owner can see the spirit of their blade. However, when training for Bankai, the Soul Reaper must establish a connection so powerful with their Zanpakuto that others are able to view it, such as in the case of Renji, in the Soul Society arc, and Muramasa in the Zanpakuto Rebellion arc. Note, regardless of this being filler, it expands off the idea of a perfect bond with the Soul Reaper and Zanpakuto. Once the communication is established to this extent, the Soul Reaper is ready to learn the Zanpakuto's true name. Once the true name is attained, the Soul Reaper will grow five to ten times their normal strength. However, this does not mean the Soul Reaper is all-powerful. In fact, it is the exact opposite. For the Soul Reaper must embark on a 10-year mastery quest now, as to gain the trust further with their blade. However, this does not mean the Soul Reaper is all-powerful. In fact, it is the exact opposite for the Soul Reaper. However, this does not mean the Soul Reaper is all-powerful. In fact, it is the exact opposite, for the Soul Reaper must embark on a 10-year mastery quest as to gain the trust further with its Zanpakuto. Even though the Soul Reaper has acquired Bankai, this does not mean the Zanpakuto trusts its master completely. In the case of Rinji Abarai, his Zanpakuto did not trust him with its power at all and even kept it so far away from him that it took one of the royal guards having to release it by name. To most, 
the Bankai is the final stage of evolution for their Zanpakuto. But, as most things, the Zanpakuto can achieve two extra stages. Though, it is slightly confusing and one is highly dangerous. Both forms are considered the peak power of the Zanpakuto. So what if I told you there was a form beyond Bankai, one so powerful it can't be felt by lower level life forms? This form is so strong that even getting close to these beings would disintegrate you. A transcendental form that manifests Riatsu in its purest state and can even destroy entire mountains simply by existing. This form is a fusion of Zanpakuto and Soul Reaper. Remember when I brought up communicating with your Zanpakuto? Well, the first form of this ungodly state is a product of pure meditation. I am of course referring to the right arm fusion, or more commonly known as Dangai form. Now, the Dangai precipice world is not this form. In fact, it is something completely separate. The reason this form is called Dangai is due to Ichigo Kurosaki meditating in the Dangai for an accelerated period of three months to defeat Sosuke Aizen. With the help of his father stopping the restrictive current, Ichigo was able to achieve a bond so powerful with his Zanpakuto that it not only fused together with him, but it also allowed him to use the absolute fullest extent of his powers and abilities at the time. Making him into his signature move, the Getsuga Tensho, and even granting him a new attack move, Mugetsu. A move that manifests a blade in a shadowy form and sends a massive wave of black energy, similar to the sky of a new moon, towards the opponent, ripping them in half. So, why would I go into this attack in such detail? Well, this is a form of fusion. Though, compared to the final part, this is considered an extremely inferior form. Though this form is of transcendental conception, it is not without its flaws. The fusion of right arm and Zanpakuto is a sacrificial one, at least in the theoretical case of Ichigo Kurosaki. In the fight with Aizen, both characters fused with their Zanpakuto. Though, given the bond that Ichigo had with the Zanpakuto, he was significantly stronger. This is due to the technique that Ichigo used. The fusion of Zanpakuto and right arm may be seen as an ass pull, but it is a technique that has been carried over throughout the rest of the series. I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but due to the lack of information, I have to try my best to summarize this form as best as I can. Which brings us to the final version of this technique the full body fusion. Now, the full body fusion is a technique achieved only by Sosuke Aizen and is most likely only achieved through the Hogyoku, at least in his case. The most notable difference in this technique being Aizen is able to will Kyoka unto someone rather than having to show the blade first, as well as being able to manifest a full blade rather than a shadowy figure of one. Now, with this in mind, the most logical answer for this form would be the Hogyoku. In his fight with Ichigo Kurosaki, after being torn to shreds from Mugetsu, Aizen was able to fuse with his Zanpakuto Kyokusoigetsu because the Hogyoku was afraid of dying. And seeing Ichigo in this state, inspired it, or rather forced Aizen to take on this form as well, to combat Ichigo. However, let's assume this is not the case, and Aizen achieved this form naturally. How would he have done this? Well, you guessed it, meditation. Through the act of meditation from the time he was sliced in half and captured, theoretically at least, to the time he was freed. 
Aizen probably meditated with Kyoka to the point that he both made amends with it for it breaking in the fake Karakura Town arc and became one with it. Fun fact, Yuha was not the first one to have Kyoka used on him. In the light novel, Spirits Are Forever With You, the former Kenpachi, Soya Azashiro, confronted Aizen, and when Aizen used his Zanpakuto, it did not work on Azashiro due to his ability. After fusing with the Zanpakuto completely, it is highly possible that the user is able to utilize the fullest extent of their Zanpakuto and have absolute control over it. However, this is not without extreme training and is even so powerful that the user may even die to spiritual pressure poisoning, if not constantly kept in check. Most likely, you will not achieve this form. And with that being said, I hope you all feel more well-versed in the world of Bleach. And I hope you all have sweet dreams. If you have any suggestions for the next episode of Serete Talk, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything Bleach-related, leave it in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed, please, please leave a like on this video. Share it if you can. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in this world that don't know jack about bleach that want to say they do, that need to be educated. But that's enough for me right now. I hope you guys have sweet dreams, pals. And I'll see you in the next episode. Fuck!